Krishna and hi everybody. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me start. My name is uh, Alan Cantle, and uh, I'm the HPC subproject uh, technical lead. Um, and uh, the HPC project uh, has been running for a while in OCP, uh, but it's had a couple of misstarts, and, and I'm actually uh, helping to reboot it uh, over the last few months now. And um, today we're I'm going to give you a quick update, a look at what we're trying to cover. And I, I'm joined with, uh, with uh, several colleagues from HP, IBM, Penguin Computing, Intel, and NVIDIA, who will be giving lightning talks uh, from their perspective of what they would love to see from, uh, H, from OCP on, on HPC going forward. Um, so the, the scope exploration we're looking at is OCP uh, project efforts, or if we, if we look at what's going on in OCP, they're, they're, they're increasingly looking HPC-like. Um, okay, typically they're, they're dealing with uh, data, data, high performance data analyt analytics or machine learning, whereas traditional HPC is more physics challenges, but infrastructure-wise, architecture-wise, they do look very similar. HPC is traditionally low volume, expensive in custom machines, whereas the hyperscalers are massive scale, very cost sensitive machines. So maybe, you know, what can OCP learn and leverage from the HPC industry? And what can, uh, you know, and can OCP actually help bring low cost uh, HPC to the masses? And that, that, that's, that's my, my vision and hope. So we're gonna hear from the experts, as I said, um, and see their perspective on, on what they think we can do to help them. But first, let me just uh, give a quick overview. The number one supercomputer in the world is the uh, Fujitsu FX100. It's a 415 petaflop machine. We don't know, I, I couldn't find the power numbers, but it's a, a whopping $1.2 billion machine. It is very modular, two nodes in a, in a small um, a liquid called a, a card. They are plugged into 24 in a, in a main unit and then eight main units in a rack. And it can be configured up to 1.3 exaflops. And it's in a classic, a classic 60 mesh torus topology as you can see on the left. Uh, the computer before that, uh, just a middle, uh, for, for a couple of years, was the Summit HPC from uh, IBM and NVIDIA. And that was a heterogeneous machine with 200 petaflops and cost $300 million. Um, and I think this one is, is, is an interesting architecture. It's got very high bandwidth from the processors to the accelerator modules, and, 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 and it's very applicable to what we're looking at. We've been discussing actually, obviously we're looking at not only the data center, but the edge. Um, and, and so we should we be looking at edge HPC or data center HPC? So I've shown a couple of examples on the left. We've got the Tesla AI self-driving uh, a a processor with its liquid cooling, all very, very custom and a, a traditional backplane uh, embedded computer from the, from the military world. Um, and just for posterity and just to show, you know, the good old Cray one, all that massive wiring in the plug-in cards there in terms of the modularity of that one. Should we be focusing on one of these two or maybe we should focus on both? Um, but if we come back to OCP, what, we've, what have we been up to in OCP and what examples could we potentially leverage in HPC? So we've, we've got the OCP server side and uh, the OCP uh, OAI infrastructure with the universal baseboard and the accelerator modules. And this one in particular is quite interesting. It looks very much like the, uh, it's inspired by the NVIDIA SXM modules, um, but it's heterogeneous. It can take a multitude of different accelerators. And so, um, and, and, and then the OCP NIC 3.0 is a plug-in card, which you know could look like uh, may, maybe more for Im embedded use cases as well as uh, as well as just this NIC. So, so we have some building blocks here that we potentially could leverage in our HPC efforts. Just to look at look at the summit HPC and say, could we build that from the OCP pieces? Well, we could. We could take an OCP server, uh, an OAI chassis, and put them together. Um, just as a quick comparison, the performance density would be half of the summit node, 4U versus 2U. Uh, the host accelerator to the accel host to accelerator is only PCIe, so you have very limited bandwidth and in, in, in latency impacts on that one. But the OAM does have eight accelerators, summit has six, and it's heterogeneous accelerators, so you have more flexibility there. So this is an interesting one, and if I pull on this thread a little bit, little bit more, while I was working with Molex uh, before, I, before I left, 
um, uh, but basically we were looking at how do we um, enable um, the OAM OAI platform to be uh, uh, upgraded to the 112 gig speeds and, and actually support coherent links to host processors. So, so here's a model of, uh, of just a, a bare bones model of, of the cabling, the bypass cabling that we, that we added. Um, and I just so, so basically we have the direct coherent interconnect. So we're replacing the connection to the host interface board with a cable to a lower board, so we could connect OpenCAPI, CXL, or Infinity Fabric, and bypass the PCI bus. Um, then we have an ability to cable uh, blind mate cable attach. Uh, directly to the OM module, we still keep the, the, the standard MES connectors. So hopefully this is this would be forward compatible um, and, and backward compatible, uh, but we could support 112 gig. With that interconnect, we could then um, support the corner to corner communications at 112 gig. We found out that you couldn't uh, do 112 gig uh, and keep within the 30 dB budget across the corner to corner modules. So this would be a way of of getting the 112 gig there. And finally, we could do fabric expansion out of the chassis to 112 gig with retimer lists. The current system has time retimers, but this would be a retimer list connection between chassis for expansion of accelerator module. So this is just one example um, of, 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 of what could potentially be done if we were to take what OCP has done and then upgrade it for HPC. Evolutionary approach, we're leveraging a lot from what, what all the efforts that have been done. Maybe we need to take more revolutionary uh, steps as well, but I think that's what our work group needs to discuss. So this was just really a, an example, um, a courtesy of Molex. So thanks for Molex for sharing this information. It, helps, it obviously has their interconnect, um, uh, but, but there's, there's, there's other bypass options from other vendors as well. Um, on Edge or HPC, um, uh, if we look at that, uh, we've got the plug-in card from the military world. I'm not sure if we could upgrade the the uh, the NIC and the EDSFF standard to to be more uh, ruggedized and more suited for some of the embedded applications. And equally, um, the, the the Tesla module there, arguably, may that there's a chance that maybe we could leverage the OAM modules so uh, with with the liquid cooling to to for for, for, for some embedded app HPC applications. So that that these are just a couple of ideas. Um, we've had a few membership discussions so far about free so far, and the, some of the topic areas that are coming through are infrastructure friendly to HPC, including support for continuous integration and continuous deployment. So the big infrastructure so we can feed these, these machines, that could, these, these very high performance machines will be critical. Um, standardize the HPC management and telemetry with OpenBMC seems to be a thread that coming, that's coming through. So that, that, that's an interesting one. Apparently all these supercomputers tend to have different uh, management uh, software and, and, and firmware levels. Um, so, uh, and, and then there's the flexibility and modularity, which is at the core of, of OCP, obviously. But we need to focus on the ever increasing performance density, which is which which is a relentless march, especially from all the silicon vendors, and we need to continue to support them. And finally, the interconnect performance, uh, scalability, and compatibility are are key issues, um, especially with a heterogeneous system. So how do we how do we normalize those as well, or or, or allow or allow multiple ones in BF to be switchable? Oops, sorry. Uh, so. My, my call to action is please stay and listen to the, uh, the experts' views. Uh, I'm by no means an expert in this area. And, um, and, 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 and if you like what you see and you'd like to help us define a way of democratizing HPC and, and opening it up for, for others and getting the, the cost basis down, then please uh, come, in, come and join us uh, in, 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 in my sub-project. And, and with that, I'll hand over to uh, the next presentation, which was from uh, 